Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you all here. Let's uh, turn down the music music in the background. And uh, what's up? Hey, good to see you Hello. all. So, uh, well, I'm Jared Rabagot. Economy. So let's do it. Whew, that's gonna be a lot of fun today. Uh, lots of questions about this one, so it's cool to be able to yeah. finally talk about it. So much about that. So just to kind of no sound, no sound. There's we got sound here. Maybe uh, turn up your volume potentially. Yes. Well, you guys get you yes. hear voices. That's good. It's on. Sounds good. Cool. Thank you everybody for helping so, us and marking that. I just uh, cool. was checking our mic. And with that, Mike, would you like to begin with? Because today we're talking about Mirian in our in game economy. Let's discuss there. Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, just generally what we mean when we say uh, in game economy. Um, so we're talking about the resources that you can earn in game or get otherwise, and what it is that you can spend those resources on in our market and I think we're going to show a few examples of that. Yes, exactly. And so I mean, what? how can one get Mirian for example? Uh, Mirian's the same resource that we had in Shadow of Mordor. So you can earn Mirian by mesh, uh, going on missions, you can right. earn Mirian by breaking down gear to earn it, you can pick it up in the world. We have, uh, we've probably seen them before actually, you have the treasure orcs that are running around now, All so right. we have loot drops. If there is a marauder tribe in charge of a region you're going to have more loot drops and chests. So there's a number of ways that you can earn Mirian. Oh, very cool. So uh, what would you use Mirian within the game, typically? Uh, so Mirian can be used to upgrade some of your gear. It's particularly useful for upgrading your fortresses. So right. all of the fortress upgrades you get in order to add garrisons. Mm -hmm. You add garrisons so that you can put more war chiefs in place. Um, you can also increase the size of your attacking force, mm -hmm. and you can purchase all of the upgrades to your oh, assault gotcha. force or all of the upgrades to defend your fortresses. Right, okay. And uh, I saw a comment in chat, which was the uh, the shorts. I meant to change into jeans, actually, but mm. today is shorts. So, uh, Our lucky day. Yeah, exactly. So with that, now that you guys have a little bit of an introduction on Miriam, remember it's the you get from missions, you get it in that kind of thing, let's go ahead and show you guys a bit of a... Uh, what the marketplace would look like. We got this guy above us right now, the headhunter. Yes, Ooh. yes, so he's in charge. Uh, he's basically the shopkeeper of the market. Um, so he's gonna be the guy that's gonna do all these lovely deals with us. Right, and the uh, first thing we wanna do is we wanna actually buy some of these loot chests that you guys can get. So we'll start with a, a silver loot chest. Now you guys can see that it costs 500 Mirian and that you get two pieces of gear, one's rare and the other one, or at least one's rare. And so you can get you know, two rare if you want. So we'll first purchase and open that. He gets all excited. Oh, look at that, we actually got more than one. So we got, a, we got an epic with that, with Gondorian longbow from, oh, that's awesome, 253 damage. You can see also you could destroy that for more Mirian. So if you didn't like that, which actually interestingly, uh, it cost 500 to get a loot chest, and we almost got 500 back. Oh, wow. Yeah. Bargain. That's a, there we go. Bargain. So that's a loot chest. And with that, you're able to use those bows. You could crush them for more Mirian. We also can go to Silver War chests, and we're going to actually buy a bunch of these and open up a lot of these, because within these ones, you're going to get yourself some followers. So we're going to go and buy 10 of these. This will be 10,000 Mirian. Purchase and open. <laughs> People are like, that is one weird, the, the, the guy doing yeah. this. He loves it. Oh, yeah. So, all right. In this particular war chest, we got Mozu the Warlord. We have a reassignment orders, which is something we'll show you guys how to use today. And then we got Og the Devourer. So you can look at these guys. They are orcs in, that you would find from the Nemesis system when you're playing normally. Beast fodder, damaged by ranged attacks. Epic trait, great strength. He comes with a pack. He's a beast slayer. He's a cool dude. And uh, let's actually keep opening up some chests so you guys can see more of these dudes. Yeah, and I think, I mean, obviously one of the important things to note with all of these guys and all the purchases is you could get anything you're getting here through the course of right. playing as well, which is, okay, why why go through the market and get the loot chest? I think the um, the main one of the main reasons is adapting to your play style. Like, you right. either get people, we get people playing and go, I never get any gear because I never kill anyone because I have to <laughs> dominate them and I have to make them my followers. Right. So if you never want to kill anyone, you've got another way of getting them. Or 
I'm so into the gear, I just absolutely kill everybody because I have to, uh, I have to pick up the gear. So how am I going to get followers? So it really gives you some flexibility on your on your play style to be able to mix in the the marketplace. Oh, but absolutely. you're really getting the same stuff that you would get in the open world. Oh. I mean, I think honestly, one of the things too that I think is exciting is whenever we get these. Uh, like <laughs> Oh. The legend. The legend. I love it. So you can also get other various types of boosts. The spoils of war boost we won't talk about specifically, but you could get something like an experience boost. Let's see if I can get myself to there we go, open next chest. So you can get like an experience boost, for example, which then you can use that and give yourself more experience. Oh, this is a good one. This is a this particular is archer recruitment, so that you can give this to an orc and then they'll get the uh, a gang of archers or something that follows them around. So let's check out the next one. I think so. We had ten. This guy's the awesome. Oh yeah, these are. It's oh, just fun just opening these. Actually, like honestly, these. yeah. Like it's a uh, once we with the start using the, uh, the trainings and stuff though. Those yep. that's one of my favorite parts because it's like then you get to really customize your orc and make them. It is really it's really interesting that decision because obviously a big part of the nemesis system is that it's these are living breathing enemies that exist in right. this world and we really never deliberately never let you edit them like you would do in an RPG because they're right. actually alive uh -huh. you know and they exist but retraining them or assigning them a gang you know it still really fits within uh, building on their personality building right. their identity um, and I think yeah you said we're going to show how the reassignment ones work later they're really valuable. Absolutely. Actually, and so another reminder, you can get legendary orcs from these silver war chests. Uh, we actually just got two epics in this one. You're guaranteed one epic, but this time we got two. So, and then we got a, a gang of defenders. Give them a follower gang. And so, it's um, just as a reminder for everybody, this is Mirian. And this one costs 1,000 Mirian. And you get Mirian playing the game. Missions, killing treasure orcs, having the Marauder tribe as your overlord, as uh, Mike had talked about earlier. So you could strategically almost create like a money-making build if that's really your your play style. Oh, we got a gang. Yeah, again, if you want, it's a it's a nice reason to um, put in your uh, Marauder Tribe overlords as right. well. You know, or you know, all sorts of things you could do to facilitate that. This is a fun one. This is the, uh, the epic training. So you know how you guys get there's bonus traits in these epic orcs. So you can also give guys these epic traits, and we actually just got one of the epic trainings so that we could add an epic training on someone. So now we've opened 10. I've shown you guys what 10 of them look like. But we're going to take this opportunity to uh, open up some of these other war chests. And mm -hmm. I'll leave this to Mike now to discuss a little bit about how you get these war chests and what these ones are about. Yeah, so the, um, the gold war chest and, of course, the gold loot chest fundamentally work in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, just larger and with some increasing sort of levels of rarity of what you can guarantee you're going to find in them. Um, and they are the ones that you can purchase using the premium currency. So you right. can purchase gold. See. Let's open up a gold one. So gold war chests, slightly different. Bigger as you mentioned. Guaranteed legendary. And then you get two training orders and you have these guys coming out. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so it is just the quantity and quality. There is nothing that's exclusive or that you can only get behind the right. premium currency. Awesome. At all. Gotcha. So let's uh, go ahead and do a mithril one as well. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Wow, four legendaries. Yeah, it's uh, with <laughs> That's the, the cool. Mithril is guaranteed four legendaries and a legendary training, so you can make any orc that you yeah. like into a legendary. That's pretty cool. Oh, definitely. I love this guy. Is, uh, is that a harpoon on his back? Yes. God, it's the master. All right, Let's so go yeah. and have a look at what some of the um, legendary uh, the traits are on some of these guys. Okay. Let's We'll do a little bit more of a defiant. So they've got two epic traits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is where that can be really valuable with these guys is actually when you. Uh, well, there's a couple of things the legendaries are really useful for. Mm -hmm. So they've got more epic traits, right. which is fantastic if you're really trying to optimize and defend your fortress, as well as just having the most um, kind of kick-ass soldiers. But of course, the legendary guys, if they die, if right. heaven forbid one of your legendary followers dies, you've now got a piece of legendary gear as well. Uh -huh. So if you really want to deck out the uh, the legendary gear sets... Well, you can use this as one of the tactics. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's the thing with the Nemesis system is orcs are obviously amazing in their own right as followers, uh -huh. but orcs are loot as well. So right. you can always break things down from 
the follower, mm -hmm. down to the gear, down to the Mirian. Right. So that's where it really, uh, I guess, the economy um, goes. Awesome. What about the these particular featured chests up here? Ah, so the featured chests, these are really fun. So these are basically, if there's something particular you want, mm -hmm. like you're trying to build a particular sort of army or right. followers, or um, you just want to theme things, we'll periodically release different themed uh, chests. So, um, oh yeah, cool. So um, bounty earners as well, looking to kill players. You can sometimes have a theme. It's going to be enemies. It's right. going to be ologs. It's going to be assassins. It's going to be fire weapons. But just if you're really trying to customize uh -huh. your your army, these guys can be uh, particularly cool. Awesome. Well, let's. Uh, so now that we've shown you guys how to open up chests and that kind of thing, let's take an opportunity to look a little bit where you get these guys once they're open. Mm -hmm. So you see, we're on unopened chests right there, which is where we oh, grab chests if you buy a large amount. You can access your boosts here, the experience boosts or the spoils of war ones. And then you have your garrison, which is where your followers are. And the important thing with the garrison, well, there's a number of important things. One, it's where we can see we're keeping all of our common, epic, legendary orcs mm -hmm. until they deploy. But also, uh, from here, you're able to deploy those orcs into any one of your regions as right. well. So, again, if you're really trying to customize a fortress, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's incredibly handy. And Right before we explain a little bit more on this, Chad, if you see, like, go ahead and give us a row and then a, yeah, go ahead and give us a row and then a column real quick. And uh, we want to, and just the first person to say, like, row 1.4 or something, we'll go to that and we'll show you something kind of fun that you can do in the garrison specifically here. As specifically around the uh, hold for destroy for gear. And since we have a legendary guy, we'll show you guys oh. one of them. And then okay. uh, middle three was the one that grabbed. So first we're going to kill, uh, let's see, middle three. So we're going to kill this guy, as requested. How could you, Jared? Oh! <laughs> I, not the Karagor, too. Karagor goes out. That just seemed gratuitous. But, so as you guys can see, also, you get your gear from that, and then you can immediately crush it back if you so desired, which is 235 gear is about one-fifth of uh, what the that actual war chest had. Mm -hmm. So rest in peace, Karagor. <laughs> Poor Kerry. And uh, let's do a legendary one too, so people can see a legendary grab. Who are we gonna kill? Eh, we'll grab this guy, but they'll tell uh, first. First one on the bottom row that you guys want us to kill, we'll kill real quick too. Cloak of Horrors. Horrors from the Fear Lord. I'm not gonna show you guys cool. too much on that one though, because uh, it's legendary. We'll let you guys discover it. Let's see. I'll press F for respects. Yes, F to pay respects. Agreed. Uh, first, Azalar and Uh Two. Okay. Will it end. Two. I just saw was the one that was there. Grom the Bowmaster. Grom. Destroy. So legendary alt gear also drops more Mirian. So if you grabbed one of these from a civil loot chest, it's possible you can just be like, ah, I don't really like this guy, grab this, and immediately crush for another war chest if you so desired. And uh, with that, let's uh, go ahead and put one of these guys into the hierarchy so people mm -hmm. can see that. So we're going to grab, uh, we'll, we'll start with this guy here. Deploy. Welcome to Nernan. Deploy. Go ahead and Ookbook goes and walks in. Ookbook's now part of the Nernin environment. And so we're going to now do a little bit of a, a host's face to face because we want to keep some things behind the scenes still a little bit. But what we now want to show you oh, guys. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, that face. Oh, I know. It's yeah. a great face. But now what we want to show you guys, us with name tags, is the training order. Because mm -hmm. I think that's going to be pretty fun. So now this guy lives in Nernin. This is Ook Booker Karagor Slayer. And actually, I think he's on a mission already. He's on a mission already. So, we're going to real quick go to one of these guys with that one and show you, which is okay, but you go in command, training order. Yeah, the training order. So, do you want to talk again a little bit more about the. Uh, yeah, so basically, these are ways that you can customize and upgrade and personalize um, any of your followers. So, if you wanted to give them all archer gangs, or yeah, in this case, um, battle training to upgrade them. You want to give them different elements. Oh, cool. So, yeah, you just want them to level up. Um, these are really cool ways to be able to develop your army. Uh, give, him a, give him a gang. A gang? We'll give him an archer gang. Go with that. And uh, actually, guys, when you keep seeing these options pop up, go ahead and just put numbers in on what one you want us to do, and we'll just, whatever quick one I see in there, we'll go ahead and do, just so you yep. guys can kind of like make an orc with us real quick if you'd like to. Uh, but let's actually make him our bodyguard real quick. 
cool. And uh, once again, gonna hide for a moment. Woo, scary, huh? What are we doing behind the curtain? Just move it back in the Nernin. So let's go ahead and, uh, did I make my bodyguard? Yes, I did. Yes, you did. Whoa. So there we go. bring him in. He's our bro. Okay, and he's ready to summon that gang. All right, so let's, uh, gonna walk in real quick and see if he can get the gang summoning. See if First, can sneak in, command him to kill someone. Command I just him. love right. that feature. All right, we'll do that real quick. Let's see if I can find someone. There you go. Go get him. So he'll run off and do his thing. Oh, he'll snipe him from here. Oh, yeah, that's right, he's an archer. So an archer as a bodyguard, if you're in stealth, is pretty fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. that's a... Yeah, so... And he should pull out his... Or he's going to in a second. Go ahead, kill that one. Shoot. Let's see. One, six... Oh, I just got hit. I was looking, looking at chat. I'm waiting for him to do his summon thing. If he doesn't do yeah, it... Yeah, he's got into combat a bit here, so... Right. Might make, oh, you get the horse. So on. is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? All right, you know what? I'm gonna take an opportunity to uh, hide us again and then give him like a, whatever you guys actually asked for. Quick hide. And then that was so cool being able to snipe. Oh, I know, that. I didn't I actually that. think so about sneak that. sneak in, archers as bodyguards so are let's, awesome. Let's go ahead, that's cool, he's already, and give him another training order. Let's give him something that's a little bit, let's see, I'm seeing a lot of sixes, so I'm assuming that's uh, one, two, three, four. Fire, fire weapon. Yeah, yeah, we'll do the fire weapon then. Give him the fire weapon. So he should have a fire, like, uh, so does the crossbow, actually. We can yep. Oh, there we go. So he's going to be able to shoot fire now for one moment. Sneaky, sneaky. This reminds me a little bit of um, almost like a Scooby-Doo transfer whenever we go back to this. Yes. Or it's going to be... Whoa! A, oh, I'm in a you last go. chance. You got this. That's okay. <laughs> that would be terrible if I were to die in this right now. Oh, look, oh, everybody's on fire. fire's everywhere. Well done. Good job. And he's enraged. He's enraged, everyone's on fire. It's pretty cool. Nice. Oh, he's fighting another dude, too. Oh, and he's standing in his own fire, which is enraging him. He's right. a legend. He is a legend. That is pretty cool. So now everybody's attacking us, though. So let's go ahead and pull back out to us. Pause the thing I really like with these is the fact that you're not totally reliant on the randomness of the nemesis system. Right. You can really create a theme across your whole your whole army. All fire guys. Yeah, or yeah. if you want to do something like... Um, I mean, we haven't seen our gang necessarily pop up, but you could do like the Mighty Savages, so now yep. they're even more powerful. Or you can do the immediate legendary training. which And then kill him for loot. And kill him for loot, exactly. Yeah. Actually, if um, we'll, uh, we'll put some more guys in here in a second, but let's see if we can find a spot real quick. Well, oh, it's, we're in, oop, my bad. So many choices. Oop. So, legendary, totally. Okay, we'll do legendary in a second, but let me do another hide again real quick. Oop. Perfect. Pop back out. So I'm going to take this opportunity to put some more guys in because this will allow us more things to play with. Specifically, let's go ahead and put a couple more of these cats in. Snafu the Pickler, back in Nernin. Nice. And then we will add another guy real quick. Mozu the Elder. And so we have to put a bunch of guys in because I want to show you guys the legendary bit. And uh, But sometimes I go on the missions, and so I wanted to make sure to give you guys that. Cool. And then the once again, the Batman transfer, which I think I prefer Batman transfer is the wording I want to use for a while we switch back and forth. And Batman to Scooby-Doo, as long as you're staying within the Warner Brothers family. Exactly. Perfect. Snafu the Pickler, training orders. Let's go ahead and give him legendary. advanced legendary training. You can also do this with someone who is just a common as opposed to an epic, but we're doing epic right now because I want to show you guys that you can also do it to an epic if you so decided. Legendary Pickler. Yeah. His pickles are just legendary. <laughs> I love that. He's just the best sandwich mm -hmm. ever. He's the most amazing Pickler ever. So let's say, like, we've now put this guy here. What if we wanted to do put him in Saragost? How mm -hmm. would I do that? You would go into the uh, command and you would give him the um, redeployment, or reassignment, I should say, reassignment order. That's going to move him back into the garrison. Mm -hmm. And then once he's back in the garrison, oh, he always looks so, so sad. sad. <laughs> Didn't you like my pickles? <laughs> I guess not. Nope. Uh, from here, because there's an empty slot, that gives you a shortcut straight to the market just by clicking the right stick. He's still washing his hands. There just needs to be more <laughs> soap in Mordor. More so prepared. Um, then we go down to our legendary guys, where he should be easy to find, and there he is, Snafu, just waiting for his next command. 
And now we can just go on the D-pad and we can just go through any of the regions we have and redeploy him into that region. So of course, that would only apply to someone you'd gotten through the market. You could do that to any one of your, uh, any one of your orcs. Right. And just to do a quick uh, back Batman change, because I want to show you guys just so that you can see that as well, that you can go from the army, someone that we grabbed game, I keep going up to the host with name tags, so you guys never forget who we are, is that we'll go to somebody who we've actually nabbed from dominating in the game, mm -hmm. same thing. If this guy you loved so much and you really wanted to just bring him with you to Saragost, you can. Reassignment again. What if the region is full? Ah, good question. Ah. So do you want to handle that one? Or? Ah, yeah, so Orc society is pretty brutal when it comes to that sort of stuff. Uh, if it's full, he's going to kill his way in. Um, so he's going to prioritize trying to attack an enemy. Right. But if you had the situation where you are completely and utterly full and the region's just full of, of your own guys, he is going to slaughter another weaker follower to make his way into that hierarchy. Right. So they will always survive as they enter? Yes. Okay. Yes. If you've gotten someone from the market or whatever, they're guaranteed to make it into that hierarchy. But that's right. that's a pretty extreme edge case. If uh -huh. you've managed to get every you know, single one. get every single guy, not have any enemies fight their way back in, that's that's pretty extreme. Right, right. Okay. Very cool. So with that, I mean, let's go ahead and give a guy just a bunch more stuff so people can see them, but yeah, cool. As far as that goes, we'll level up this. Actually, we'll give him uh, an advanced mighty savage. Mighty savage. I think it would be cool. He's actually the guy that we have currently in the place. Oh, he's an agonizer too. I didn't even mm -hmm. realize that. So one of the the new orcs that we've recently been showing. So oh I, yeah, there we go. You can see actually he moved from being a common into an epic orc because we gave him an epic trait. So he moved up, and he actually yeah, <laughs> that's really interesting. So if he has savages around him. He will make them better. Currently, we have archers. Oh, yeah, that's a nice uh, synergy, actually. That's cool. So, well, what we would need to do is get a gang of savages mm -hmm. trait, and then... Or, see, a lot of the times these epic traits really are particularly valuable in the yeah. big, in the fort assaults. Right. So, for example, if you've got him, and then you choose the savage host upgrade, that's going to be really valuable. So, Ooh, if you're really point. trying to make the most powerful fortress you can... Um, that's often where these epic guys really shine. Right. So if we actually we'd hap if we'd happen to pick up uh, like a gang of archers, which I think we, or excuse me, a gang of, gang of savages, which we did not. We have hunters. We have defenders. That is actually a good point in relation to this. Whatever right. upgrade you've given them, if you want to overwrite that, right. any new training will can overwrite any previous training. Actually, let's we can demonstrate that real quick. Yep. So we'll grab the gang of defenders. Now the Agonizer has defenders. He doesn't have archers and defenders now. He just replaces him. In kind of the way where you wouldn't necessarily have, like, a cursed fire weapon. You would have, as you can see, you would have a flame or a cursed or exactly. a poison. Yep. Right. Let's see. Uh, qu yeah, that was a, a question that just popped in. Can a captain have multiple gangs? No. Hmm. Has to be one type of gang, one type of weapon. Yep. Can have multiple epic traits, but once again, similar thing of, because you would need uh, to become a legendary. You can have multiple epic traits right. if you're legendary, which is... Right, like, exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's actually grab a guy who has a lot of traits, like Mozu the Elder, I think had a ton of them. Uh, so Karagor, Thick-Skinned, Beast Slayer. There was one of our guys that we had in the market was insane in the amount of traits that he had. He might have been a legendary. So as you guys can see, you can quickly go back and forth if you're trying to outfit your army very... But that yeah. guy was... <laughs> in his head. Yeah, he did. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's see if I can find the guy. I believe he was a feral. Um, that was the guy with that. Ah, yes, yeah, so it was this guy. So you can, as you can see, you can have a huge amount of epic traits, and as long as these don't get into the slots, you can actually have quite a few amount of traits as one of these guys. Graug Call is definitely an epic trait oh, as well. Absolutely. These guys. This one particular guy. He's so he's like decreases cursed, brings in grabs, burns you, brings in Karagors as well, mm. dro throws bombs, and then he's also a beast slayer. Imagine so this dude as a as an overlord. It'd be amazing. <laughs> He'd be a fun, fun yeah. one. That so, is a fun thing because we can have these guys get to a level and have traits that can be uh, way beyond anything we could throw at people during the course of just oh, yeah. the normal story. But uh, the fact that we've got more traits, we've mm -hmm. got levels, they can go all the way up to level 60, um, it really lets that, that Elder game just become pretty fun. Oh, absolutely. 
And so there you go, guys. That's actually, that's the market. I mean, when we were talking about the economy, you, just to remind everybody, Murian allows you to buy these silver mm -hmm. chests and you can get everything we've shown you out of those silver chests. Or out of the game, basically. Or out of the game, yeah, yes, There's exactly. no content that's just here in the market. And that also applies to these, right? Yep. So these also apply all out of the game or even out of the chests yep. that are silver. So in that regard, guys, so remember you can apply them this way. We wanted to do and keep this one short because we know that you guys will have more questions. So to kind of finalize our discussion, uh, we're going to have on community.wbgames.com an FAQ that basically takes everything that Mike and I just talked about. And you guys can read through it. You can ask us questions there. That's where we're going to have that live so that we can minimize any misinformation or, you know, question. And if you have questions, we can give them all in one place. And so that's really the main plan. If you guys need a reminder of, like, where that is, down in the uh, descriptions below, especially if you're on Twitch, you'll be able to see the community.wbgames.com. You can see that's being posted in chat right now. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And we'll say see you. We back next week. Next week, we're back next week. And uh, but like we said, we wanted to give you guys just a hard punch one because you wanted to see this. All right. Cool. cool. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. See you that later. Was really good. Bye. We gotta find the right, the right goodbye. There you go. Now I can say goodbye. <laughs>